The Origin of Flattery by Charlotte Turner Smith, read for LibriVox.org by David Barnes. When Jove, in anger to the sons of the earth, bid artful Vulcan give Pandora birth, and sent the fatal gift which spread below o'er all the wretched race contagious woe, unhappy man, by vice and folly tossed, found in the storms of life his quiet lost, while envy, avarice, and ambition hurled discord and death around the warring world. Then the blessed peasant left his fields and fold, and bartered love and peace for power and gold, left his calm cottage and his native plain in search of wealth to tempt the faithless main or braving danger in the battle stood and bathed his savage hands in human blood no longer then his woodland walks among the shepherd lad his genuine passion sung or sought at early morn his soul's delight or graved her name upon the bark at night to deck her flowing hair no more he wove the simple wreath or with ambitious love bound his own brow with myrtle or with bay, but broke his pipe or threw his crook away. The nymphs forsaken other pleasures sought, then first for gold their venal hearts were bought, and nature's blush to sickly art gave place, and affectation seized the seat of grace. No more simplicity by sense refined Or generous sentiment possessed the mind. No more they felt each other's joy and woe, And Cupid fled and hid his useless bow. But with deep grief propitious Venus pined To see the ills which threatened womankind, Ills that she knew her empire would disarm, And rob her subjects of their sweetest charm. Good humour's potent influence destroy, And change for lowering frowns the smile of joy. Then deeply sighing at the mournful view, She tried at length what heavenly art could do, To bring back pleasure to her pensive train, And vindicate the glories of her reign. A thousand little loves attend the task, And bear from Mars's head his radiant cask. The fair enchantress on its silver bound Weaved with soft spells her magic cestus round, Then shaking from her hair ambrosial dew, Infused fair hope and expectation new and stifled wishes and persuasive sighs and fond belief and eloquence of eyes and faltering accents which explain so well what studied speeches vainly try to tell and more pathetic silence which imparts infectious tenderness to feeling hearts soft tones of pity fascinating smiles and Maya's son assisted with her wiles, And brought gay dreams, fantastic visions brought, And waved his wand o'er the seducing draught. Then Zephyr came, to him the goddess cried, Go fetch from Flora all her flowery pride To fill my charm, each scented bud that blows, And bind my myrtles with her thornless rose, then speed thy flight to Gallia's smiling plain, Where rolls the Loire, the Garonne, and the Seine. Dip in their waters thy celestial wing, And the soft dew to fill my chalice bring. But chiefly tell thy Flora that to me She send a bouquet of her fleur-de-lis. That poignant spirit will complete my spell. Tis done, the lovely sorcerer says, is well. And now Apollo lends a ray of fire, The cauldron bubbles and the flames aspire, The watchful graces round the circle dance, With arms entwined to mark the work's advance, And with full quiver sportive Cupid came, Tempering his favourite arrows in the flame. 
Then Venus speaks, the wavering flames retire, And Zephyr's breath extinguishes the fire. At length the goddess in the helmets round, A sweet and subtle spirit duly found, More soft than oil, than ether more refined, Of power to cure the woes of womankind, And called it flattery. Balm of female life, it charms alike the widow, maid, and wife, Clears the sad brow of virgins in despair, And smooths the cruel traces left by care, Bids palsied age with youthful spirit glow, And hangs May's garlands on December's snow. Delicious essence, howsoe'er applied, By what rude nature is thy charm denied? Some form seducing still thy whisper hears, Stern wisdom turns to thee her willing ears, And prudery listens and forgets her fears. The rustic nymph, whom rigid aunts restrain, Condemned to dress and practice airs in vain, at thy first summons finds her bosom swell, And bids her crabbed gouvernance farewell, While, fired by thee with spirit not her own, She grows a toast, and rises into ton. The faded beauty, who with secret pain Sees younger charms usurp her envied reign, By thee assisted can with smiles behold The record where her conquests are enrolled. And dwelling yet on scenes by memory nursed, When George the second reigned, or George the first, She sees the scenes of ancient beau arise, Who swear her eyes exceeded modern eyes, when poets sung for her, and lovers bled, And giddy fashion followed as she led. Departed modes appear in long array, The flowers and flounces of her happier day, Again her locks the decent fillets bind, The waving lappet flutters in the wind, And then comparing with a proud disdain The more fantastic tastes that now obtain, She deems ungraceful, Trifling and absurd, the gayer world that moves round George the Third. Nor thy soft influence will the train refuse, Who court in distant shades the modest muse. Though in a dim form more pure and more refined, Thy soothing spirit meets the lettered mind. Not death itself thine empire can destroy, Towards thee even then we turn the languid eye, Still trust in thee to bid our memory bloom, And scatter roses round the silent tomb. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.